Uh, hi, I was asked by a student about the software I use to draw chemical structures and chemical reactions. I was a piece of software called Accelerus Draw 4, uh, which is quite a nice tool, and what's really nice about it is that it's free. Uh, if you search for Accelerus Draw, the first thing you'll come up with in Google is the main page for the company, uh, which if you're interested in there, you might want to have a little look through to see some of the more sophisticated pro products they produce. Uh, a little further down, you'll find Accelerus Draw, no fee, so it's free. And I know it says, it says for students, teachers, and researchers in academic environments. Now, when you click on that, it'll take you to a page where you're going to enter some contact information. Uh, the one thing you do need to enter is your university email. Now, it is for free for teachers, lecturers, and students in, in educational establishments, uh, but people outside educational establishments would have to pay. Um, Okay, so one of the questions which might arise is, why do we need to do this? If I want that image of glucose, I can just go to, um, let's go to um, Wikipedia, and there's an image of D-glucose in the chain form. Um, now, those of you who are keeping up to speed with the structure of carbohydrates will appreciate this is glucose in the solid form, and when it's in the uh, aqueous solution, it forms a ring. Um, so if you want the ring form, this isn't an image which you could use. And similarly, if we do a search for old glucose in Wikipedia, you'll notice it gives us a picture of it in the ring form. Uh, if you wanted it in the chain form, this image wouldn't be any good to you. So one of the things you would use is the reasons why you use this program is to get the image in the way that you want it to appear. Uh, I'd also suggest that it's quite a good teaching tool as well. It shows you how atoms connect together, how, how bonds work. Uh, a little bit about three-dimensional structure of um, molecules as well. Um, actually, I wouldn't really, if we, while we're talking about glucose, I wouldn't really use either of these. This is more the form that would probably present glucose, at least glucose in solution. Uh, this makes the three-dimensional arrangement of the bonds much clearer, in my opinion. Okay, so you can certainly do straightforward molecules and some quite complicated ones as well. Uh, the question then becomes, how complicated? Let's go back a page here. This is vitamin B12, a reasonably complicated molecule, which you would certainly do in Accelerus Draw. The uh, question is, would it be worth it? it when it, the mo mo molecules get quite complicated, it takes quite a long while to draw them properly, so in this case it's maybe not worth the effort. Um, one thing I will mention here, which is so many students often have a problem with, is copying these images and then using them. If you just go to here and right click, and go to copy, and then open up a window in the graphics program, which really nice then. Uh, this is my ancient copy of Paint Shop Pro. If I paste that in, uh, paste is new image. It comes up with this horrible black mess, which isn't actually very useful. Um, if you paste it into a lot of programs like Word and uh, PowerPoint, you might actually get away with this. But the way around this is quite straightforward, and that's just to copy the screen and then crop down the image you want. So I'm going to copy the screen using the uh, function print screen combination on my computer. Uh, go back to the drawing program. Get rid of that. Uh, edit, paste this new image. And there we've got the screen image. Uh, I can use the crop tool to crop that. Uh, shift R. And then I can do quite a lot of things with this. I can change the size of the image, uh, maybe add some labels. Uh, okay, so a little tip there if you want to capture an image, and uh, it's proving a bit sort of difficult to do. Right, uh, we're going to go back to this diagram we saw a little bit earlier on. This is from second year biochemistry. It's the metabolism of acetanilide, which is obtained from uh, willow bark to paracetamol, and then further reactions which take place. Now, one thing you notice straight away is that these atoms are coloured. Uh, this isn't arbitrary. Uh, you often see this, and especially in molecular models, this is a system called CPK colouring, named after three very famous chemists, Robert Corley, Linus Pauling, and Walter Colton. Uh, so when we use the molecular models and things like tutorials, uh, and you get a little red sphere, we don't use this type of molecular model, we use a, a rather better type. Uh, but you see red, that's indicating oxygen atom. That blue is a nitrogen, the black is carbon, and the white is hydrogen and these are true of all the molecular model kits you'll get so it's quite useful and uh, that's a ball and stick model of proline I uh, beg your pardon proline no proline uh, those of you who've listened to uh, my 
uh, videos on guinea pigs, humans and carrots will appreciate uh, that mild joke. Okay, so these are used for lots of things. And we'll move on from my mild joke. Right, so how do you use it? Uh, I'm not going to draw the whole thing out, but what I'm going to do is reproduce this little part of the reaction. Uh, reasonably complicated, you might think, uh, you do see people occasionally trying to draw hexagons by hand, which is a nightmare. Uh, if you look up here, you'll see lots of different shapes which are already drawn for you. Now the first one, this is one of the most used in chemistry, is a benzene ring. So I click on that, move down here, and lo and behold, we have a benzene ring appear immediately. Okay, the next thing we want to do is draw in this carbon skeleton. This here is the bond tool. Click on it. Uh, go down to the, uh, I use the left mouse button there. Again, using the left mouse button, I've selected that carbon. I'm going to click there, and it puts in a bond for us. Now, there's a carbon atom up here, obviously. And when we click on this, it's got a reasonably good idea of where it should go. But in this case, it gets it wrong. We want it going the other way. So we'll put in the one going the other way, and then go to the erase tool and get rid of that one. Okay, go on. now back to the bond tool to complete the uh, uh, carbon skeleton. And click on that. It puts in the one going up. Click on that. It puts on the one going down. Now it's a double bond, so again we select it and left click again and it puts in the double bond for us. Okay, that's quite nice. Uh, we now need to put in the various groups and atoms. Uh, I'm going to start off with carbon because it's one of the most sort of slightly peculiar ones. We, we've talked a number of times about chemistry lazy. We don't draw carbons and we generally don't draw hydrons. Uh, at least in the chain. We draw them in functional groups, obviously. And a lot of these molecular modeling programs have carbon atoms turned off permanently. You can turn them on, uh, but in many cases you wouldn't necessarily do that. So what I'm doing here is right-clicking to bring up this menu. And there's an option here which says show explicit carbon label. So I'll click on that. It now makes carbon appear. There's also a formatting tool over here. We can change various things. And I think if we click on that, we can enter in the carbon... Uh, the hydrogens directly. It's gone sort of the wrong way around. So what we're going to do is right click on that again, bring up this menu, uh, and go down to uh, wherever it is. Hydrogen display. Everyone's got it set to left. We want them on right actually, so we'll do that and that looks much better. Okay, uh, next thing we want to do is put in this oxygen up here. So we pick oxygen from this toolbar up here. It's quite straightforward. Go down there and click again. Uh, now, if we're going here again, now it'll put an oxygen because it remembers the last one it did. But we don't want an oxygen, we want a nitrogen. So I'll click on that. Go down there and just put a nitrogen in. Right, we want to add the hydrogen. Um, so, what we'll do in this case is again select it, right click, the menu appears, and hydrogen display appears. This time we want it to the left. Okay, so that's a, a nice straightforward way of quickly drawing the first part of the reaction. Right, um, now we can do a number of things here. Uh, we can draw this second part again from scratch. But if you look, they're very similar. The only difference is this hydrogen here has been replaced with an OH group. So what we can do is using the lasso tool, select the whole thing. And we're going to do a Control C to copy, and click over here, and Control V to paste. Uh, as I've just pasted it, I can easily move it around. So I'll just move it about here. Right, just move the whole thing up a little bit so we can see. Right, I want to go back to the bond tool now and add in this OH group. So I click there. It's added nitrogen, as I mentioned, because that's the last one we did. So all we need to do is go to O. Um, and the formatting toolbar has appeared there, but in this case we'll just add the hydrogen display by using the menu here. Okay, um, I always do that. <coughs> Whenever you've selected everything, it appears next time you click it, so you just need to Go there and delete this. Select and delete this. Right, um, they aren't quite level, so I'll bring that up a little bit by selecting this. And the next thing we want to put in is some labels on the reaction progress arrow. Uh, there's a number of these. If you uh, click on that, then click in here and drag across to make it as long as you want. Okay, and finally, we want to put in some text. So I want to label this as acetanilide. So I've clicked on the text button there with the left mouse button. And I'll type SS Anilide. Uh, to get out of it, I'll just click on the lasso tool and then we can pick it up and we can move it over here. Okay, I'm going to do the same process with paracetamol. 
some of them off. Drag that over here. And finally, I'm going to put in the reaction type, which is hydroxylation. And click anywhere. Hydroxylation. Try and form that as well correctly. Uh, pattern the little Y there. Okay, so click on that to do the select tool and move it up here. And there we are. There's the reaction I did a bit earlier on. Uh, reproduced fairly quickly. Uh, move it up so we can compare them directly. Uh, it didn't take very long to do. And once you've done it, of course, you can save this and use these structures again if you need to. Um, as I say, it's well worth considering doing this. It makes your actions look better, more professional, and you'll probably learn a little bit about uh, bonding and how uh, bonds work in compounds. Uh, so, okay, there we are. Thanks for listening.